Ecumenical Church. Today we're going to attempt to talk about what we say or sing, but we want to understand it's what we do and how we live. So if I'm going to really give this uh, title. It's not all about what we say or sing, but what we do and how we live. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, 1 through 4 and 11 and 12. It reads, Paul and uh, Savanus and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you brethren and sister as is right because your faith is growing abundantly everything except number one just mute everything but number one And the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith doing all your persecution and the afflictions that you are enduring. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his calling and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. All of that leads up to how we live and what we do instead of what we say and how we sing. We can easily sing about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We can sing about his grace and his mercy. We can say we believe and trust, but how do we live and what do we do? If we are not living the life that God would have us to live, then what we say means very little. If we are not doing what the Lord would have us to do, then again, we are not living up to his expectations. Even though we are not worthy, he has found a way to give us grace and mercy. For he came not to destroy, but he came to save to save us from all sin and deliver us to eternal glory 
with him in the kingdom of God. Second Thessalonians, although faith frames the passage of uh, something Paul is always concerned, but he encouraged it, boast not simply in uh, their faith, but in their endurance. Sometime, particularly, remem- remarkable for this congregation that is facing persecution in a world hostile to their newfound identity. The Thessalonians was a Gentile nation where Paul had Timothy and Savannah preaching the new news, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. A final suggestion since the lectionary reads of Pentecost, this encamp and compress essential the whole of uh, this belief. This brief letter, this offers the preacher an opportunity for a three-part sermon. I'm not going to do a three-part sermon this week or next week. I will only be talking about Second Thessalonians today, even though I can go on and on with the series. But there is one thing I need for us to always remember. The glorification of Christ or of God relies on what we sing, not on what we sing or say, than on what we actually do and how we live. It's easy for us to say, I don't have no change. Catch me next week. Knowing that in our pocket or somewhere close to us, we have change or something that we could hand to one who is asking for help. You see one of the homeless people on the corner, and then you try to avoid them instead of approaching them with grace and mercy. And if they ask you, Tell the truth. I can't give you nothing right now. If I see you later, I may give you something. Hear that? Didn't say I will, say I may. But what would God do? God would probably feed him, talk to him, and give him a word of encouragement. A slight word of encouragement, I may give you something next time I see you. But... Is it really? Does that really uh, account for what you are thinking and what you might say? Once again, I'm going to tell you, the question of repentance and forgiveness is highlighted in the lectionary this week. This time, there are two complementary emphasis in the reading. The first is the need to face our own darkness, our own greed, our fear and empty worship. Confess it and receive God's forgiveness for our self. Uh Uh-oh, let me say that again. The first is the need to face our own greed, our own fear, and empty worship. Confess it and receive God's forgiveness for ourselves. Both Habakkuk and Isaiah reflects God's displeasure at loveliness 
and faithlessness and call for repentance. See, a lot of us have both of those, lovelessness and faithlessness. Even though we say we believe, but do we show that we believe? Even though we say we love, but do we show that love when the time comes? The Psalms celebrate the goodness of God's law and the liberation that comes through repentance and forgiveness. Oh, boy. And then there's the gospel. The gospel tells the story of someone who experienced this reality and is deeply changed and healed. The second emphasizes, emphasis this week is that of the need to offer grace. The need to offer grace. Not receive, to offer grace. Welcome and forgiveness to others, especially those we would usually be tempted to reject. Again, that homeless person on the corner, that friend that you no longer talk to or speak of because of something they did to you 10, 15 years ago. You just haven't forgiven them and you don't feel like you need to. But in order for you to receive God's grace yourself, you may need to offer grace before. Within all the readings, God offers what? Forgiveness is extended to all in Paul's letter to the theologians, he encouraged the church to remain faithful and loving even as they endure hardship and persecution. In the gospel, Jesus reaches out to Zacchaeus, the hated tax collector, and enjoy fellowship with him, which is what ultimately transformed him. Do we get that? Even if we show God's love to someone we don't or we may not like or respect, and we show them that God is good no matter who or what you are it can transform them it can change their life and then you will be like wow man just a word of encouragement just a word of comfort can change the lives of, a, of people. I, I know a song, it says, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can change anybody. You know, the William brothers had a good song there. A man walking the street, telling the people about Jesus, but nobody would hear him because they would always say he's a nobody. But that nobody, with the presence of God in him, can change your life because God can save anybody. 
Now, getting back to our word. Paul celebrates the faith, love, and endurance of the Thessalonian Christians in the face of their persecution and hardship and prays for God's strength to sustain and inspire them so that they may glorify God. Everything leads back to the glorification of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God, and the Holy Ghost. The ones who can do or that does the work in us, around us, through us, not us, but them. We call that the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Now, at this present time, I open the doors of the Crucible Ecumenical Church to any and everyone who would like to receive that grace and that mercy that is promised through God himself, from God himself, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Will there be one, anyone? Let us stand as we pray this prayer. This is for those who would like to receive, those who would like to renew, Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, it is with great, great appreciation that you gave your only begotten Son that we should have eternal life, that he died on Calvary so that our sins may be forgiven, that he was buried and rose again on the third day for that we may have uh, restoration, that we may have the fulfillment of life in through Jesus Christ, your Son. Lord, we confess our sins. We accept your Son as our, lead, as our Lord and Savior. Yes. We repent of our sins. We give you honor. We give you praise and glory. Amen. Let us remain standing for our benediction. For those that are seated, would you stand, please?